There are some fairly senior police officers in Lancashire Police that should be seeking alternative employment. Because for the first three days, Friday, Saturday and Sunday, they dealt with it entirely as a missing person inquiry. That's why we never saw it cordoned off. It's why over the course of that weekend, we saw people's bags propped up against that bench and a, a bouquet of flowers yeah. were placed on it's that It's really bench. significant. It's only when you come to the scene that you actually understand, and that's why it's so important as an investigator always to come back to the scene. I call this a crime scene. That's how we talk about it. And what's really significant is the police have said is it unlikely and their theory is that she hasn't left the area. But let's be very clear about that. It is impossible to say that. Yeah, it's, it's awful. This is an awful case, and I just wish it had been handled a lot better in the first place by giving certain information that would have helped us um, target our search in specific areas. Because we want an effective police service in yeah. the UK. Yeah. That's why I do what I do. Yeah. That's why I hold them to account. That's why I highlight their mistakes, their errors, their inefficiencies, because the public deserve a competent police service that they can trust and be confident that they will do their job properly. But at the moment, it's completely right to say that policing, in many regards, is in crisis. Yeah, this has come down from the top level, Jeremy. Someone has said, do not hand this information to the... Look, there's a lot of egos here. Egos on every job. And I've spoken about this for a long time. What is going on? Where is the common sense? in British policing? Where is the robustness to deal with things properly, simply, effectively? I think the leadership cohort that are all very highly educated these days with letters after their names as well as in front of them have kind of morphed into some detached, self-serving rather than public-serving cohort. The whole, the whole ethos of public service seems to have been somewhat lost in the need to, to protect their own interests. They were really speaking about it, but very clearly, because of a high-risk status, they thought that she may well have taken her own life. The reality is, though, is that could she have gone in this water and committed suicide? And what I would say is that that is almost impossible. How did she end up in a depth in the middle where she could end up dying? Because if she'd come down the side here, it's so short, she, so shallow, she couldn't have died. In fact, Wednesday's was calamitous, absolutely appalling. Almost from the moment that Nicola disappeared, in terms of communicating with the public and the media, Lancashire Constabulary have got this catastrophically wrong. Today isn't just the first occasion when they've try to suppress speculation and all they've done is fuel it. Mm. Today was utterly ludicrous when they said that there were private and personal matters which were the vulnerabilities around them. But, of course, don't speculate about them. We're not going to discuss them. And six hours later, they have to do a complete and very embarrassing mm. U-turn. It's been a catastrophe from start to finish. And this case will be remembered for years. It will be used on senior officer training courses as the finest example of how not to communicate. Hello, all, and welcome back to Mind Juice. Just when I thought, felt like I had hit a period of stalemate in regards to this case, after my previous episode, that is, releasing just prior to the most recent press conference, I always ask myself, can I offer anything further, insightful, informative, mind-juice-worthy content? Anything at all that can respectfully generate a possible shimmer of significance further on to this case? Remember, I am not studying this to seek out gotcha moments and or sensationalize like you see with many of the videos coming out across the platform which is fine to each his own but with that said it is important to me as i continue to build this community that this channel breathes authenticity sure i am not on the ground living in saint michael's or further even in england at that nor do i really have any frontline connections yet I merely aim to present a thought-provoking basis, an outside-the-box approach, if you will, emphasizing truth and rationale at every turn. I hope this has come across clear thus far. Yes, there will be times wherein I ponder and ask questions that grind on the edge of speculation, but this is simply a purpose 
focused thought experiment projected to press further forward, potentially uncovering answers if they're even there. Hence, without any further real developments or information in regards to what happened or where is Nicola, I wasn't quite sure when or if I would produce another episode anytime soon regarding this case. However, after the recent presser has now come into play, along with the ludicrous release of extremely intimate and personal details pertaining to Nicola, I have found myself back in the thick of things, passionate to dig deeper. With that said, I'm 100% without a doubt committed to seeing this case through in its entirety. So as long as there is plausible information and direction to work with, I will be here. Now, as I have had the opportunity for a few days to soak everything in, whoa, buddy, I have experienced some watershed moments, to say the least. That is, the mind juices have indeed been flowing. Before I dive headfirst into everything I have for you here today, let me brief you on the aim of this episode. It is, broadly speaking, twofold. I have come across some evolution in thought in regards to Willow, Paul, Emma, and the other parties involved. More questions, findings, observations that I want to share, which I indeed feel will have many of you pondering by the time we're through here today. If you have enjoyed any of the previous content, this one is going to be right on par, if not present to be the most progressive piece yet. Simply put, I want to revisit her movements that day, Nicholas that is taking into account some advancements in perspective I have achieved since last speaking with all of you. With that said, I do want to briefly pursue, peruse the recent presser. Not to recite everything that most of you already know, given that you likely watched the presser yourselves if you are here with me now, but to break it down, show you what I was able to gather from this stage of the investigation, what it showed and told me, which I do believe is extremely important, does shed light on things as a whole. So, discussing the presser, what it revealed, its clear, weak attempt by police to cover themselves, or if you will, a hard sell in regards to their level of incompetence, or lack thereof. If you ask me, in regards to their orchestration of finding Nicola up until this point. Let me be clear, this is not just a shot at police. Let's move past that. Everyone has their own opinions, and I without a doubt respect that. So please stay with me, hear me out. We're all here for the same reason. Nicola is still missing. Further, all they, the police that is, or those heading this investigation, had to do was to be human, exhibit a little humility and acknowledge their shortcomings, then move forward, work with the people, for the people, not in a sense scold them and speak down towards, Becky that is to be precise. It came back to bite her in the bosom now, didn't it? Pretty good at that. Yes, I'll show and demonstrate what I exactly mean here. So if you are confused or disagree, perceiving that I am simply going to attack the police, that's cool. But this isn't the underlying thesis, trust me. Just follow along. I'd be surprised if she, Becky that is, maintains her role both in this investigation. Now, I don't know about going forward, but it doesn't look pretty if you ask me. Sure. It may sound easy for me to sit here behind my computer and say such. Yes, it's easier said than done, but in my opinion, character is key. It is everything. And we just evidenced the absence of such in Thursday's presentation, unfortunately. After the hor horrific presser, followed by the release of confidential information, the case and investigation tactics was faced with heightened scrutiny. Rightfully so. The shadow home secretary for the State Department, Yvette Cooper, addressed the issue. Simply, her role is to effectively scrutinize government policy on home affairs. Further, even alerting the attention of the Prime Minister of England, the head of government. The, the issue about um, Lancashire Police. Look, Lancashire Police have obviously had discussions with Nicola Bully's family, and I don't know what those discussions are, and I don't know what discussions have <coughs> taken place. I'm very respectful of that. Obviously, I think there are concerns because the information that, that they set out was very unusual for them to do so, and I would want to know more from uh, Lancashire Police about the reason. The disappearance of Nicola Bully are tonight facing mounting criticism for disclosing details of why they considered her as high risk. 
In the last hour, the Prime Minister has said he was concerned that private information was put into the public domain. Exactly three weeks since her disappearance, the force has confirmed it's conducting an internal the review. It has gripped the nation. In the last few hours, it's been revealed that the force searching for Nicola Bully is now in being investigated themselves by the police watchdog. Lancashire Police referred itself to the IOPC this afternoon after it admitted its officers visited the 45-year-old's home three weeks before her disappearance. The force has come under mounting criticism in recent days over its handling of the case, especially over its decision to release details about her struggles with alcohol. So... I provided that segue for a little context. It isn't my opinion that the investigation stinks to high heavens or has clearly went awry. Provoking attention from both the shadow secretary as well as the prime minister exhibits a level of scrutiny this case in handling has now engaged, exemplifies the problems that we have in face here. For my purposes, let me share with you the clear agenda set out by the ACC, the Assistant Chief Constable Peter Lawson, as well as demonstrate how the SIO, Senior Investigating Officer Becky, has taken the public's backlash a bit too personal, losing sight from what her chief intention should be. What we witnessed in the presser Thursday was a grand display of ego and pride getting in the way. It's really too bad. But hey, there is a silver lining here. There is hope. Thanks to the likes of the two Peters, Bolesky and Falding, that is, as well as Mark Thomas. I'll explain. Further, if you recall my last episode, I ended on a high note, really narrowing in on the upper field potential, which I still see as feasible, but I have more to expand on that here in a little while. Now, a side note. I know a lot of you have mentioned to me the police have cleared Rowan Waters, or they have cleared Paul on day one, how dare you? I will get there, don't worry. Yeah, and they, Becky, also stated the CCTV was working at Rowan Waters too, didn't she? They also said they have remained open-minded as well too, didn't they? Not my opinion. The writing is on the wall. I'll show you. Again, I respect police in the investigation sincerely. That is, until they give a clear reason not to. Now, if you're one of those who defy reality, even though it is presented to you, if you choose to look the other way, buy into the campaign of persistent misdirection, then so be it. Dance to their tune. I personally am not about supporting them saving face, yet assisting in potentially coming up with answers that lead to finding Nicola. Now, by myself, the chances of that? Highly unlikely, but maybe I can provoke thought to someone somewhere that might provide answers. So... If you're going to read the latest headline and then comment that is not what police said, clearly you have missed the boat as of late. Not my concern. Now, I'll be more than happy to jump on right along, on board that is, if and when they begin to exhibit a reason to deserve it, representing astute investigatory acumen, which I hope will now take place given the heightened scrutiny, inevitable changes coming down the pike in the near future, I'd imagine. I value character, those who embrace the doctrine by which they stand for, their role as police in this case. Whether they like it or not, their job is for the people, not self-interest. Unfortunately, the latter is on display here, and as I have seen, there's a lot of police chaos going over on the UK, and that's unfortunate. I hope the best there in getting things straightened out. Blah, blah, I know, I know, I know. I'll get to it. I just figure there's nothing wrong with venting a little and sharing a bit of my personality, eh? Continuing on. First things first. Just when one would think things couldn't possibly go any further haywire, the recent presser and then the sequence of events that followed proved that to be an understatement. Thursday was clearly a botched attempt to quash speculation, to reignite the public's trust and rapport in regards to the authorities leading this investigation. What was a 36-minute appearance, the presser that is, eight minutes spent by Lawson talking, and then another 18 by Smith, leaving the remaining 10 for question and answers? All it took was one to two lines to blow the lid off the whole ordeal. For the most part, the presser was a filler, not providing much new information and or insight. Peter Lawson appeared to hold his agenda quite well, actually, until following the lead of Becky's statement towards the end. What do I mean by this? I'll show you, you'll have to take a look for yourself. 
one could not really get on them per se for the presser for the entirety of the 36 minutes, yet just these two lines that encorked the entire thing. Now, after looking into the individuals who anchored the press conference, I learned that Peter Lawson is pretty high up in the chain of command. In fact, he is two positions removed from Chief Constable, while Becky Smith is quite well recognized herself as a senior investigating officer and, in fact, is apparently a detective superintendent. For me personally, in Becky's closing remark about specific and individual vulnerabilities specific to the case in Nicola, we ask you to respect the family's privacy. She, Becky, slipped the vulnerabilities twice, once in the beginning and then again at the end. But to be quite honest, I didn't even catch it in the beginning, as she referenced such much more subtly and indirect, not expanding upon and drilling down the idea so firmly as she did in her closing. Here, take a look yourself. As soon as she was reported missing, following the information that was provided to the police by her partner Paul, and based on a number of specific vulnerabilities that we were made aware of, Nicola was graded as high risk. As soon as she was reported missing, following the information that was provided to the police by her partner Paul, and based on a number of specific vulnerabilities that we were made aware of, Nicola was graded as high risk. And whilst we have shared information today about specific individual vulnerabilities specific to this case and Nicola, I would ask you to respect the family's privacy in respect of those things. And whilst we have shared information today about specific individual vulnerabilities specific to this case and Nicola, I would ask you to respect the family's privacy in respect of those things. Uh, and something around Nicola's vulnerabilities that we're able to counter some of the and I won't be clear, but uh, and something around Nicola's vulnerabilities that we're able to counter some of the and I won't be clear, but now, when the press conference was initially announced last week, further learning that the SIO, Becky Smith, and the ACC, Assistant Chief Constable, Peter Lawson would be heading it up, I had an optimistic impression, thinking to myself, all right, now we're getting somewhere. Nothing against Superintendent Riley, whom led the first couple pressers, but it goes without saying the SIO and the ACC are now at the mic. This has to be better, right? Apparently not so. Now, I'm sure the police on the ground are working hard, responsibly living up to their due diligence, behind the scenes, tracking down leads, etc. I mean, who am I to suggest otherwise, right? I acknowledge that. But focusing on the two whom led the way at the presser, right off the cuff, I could sense, read between the lines that Peter Lawson had an agenda. That is, he was overselling to the public that they had everything under control, repeatedly verbalizing expert here, expert there, best in the nation, this is the doctrine of the best, etc. Now, thinking from their perspective approaching this press conference and considering the bulk of what was said in the presser, one can presume that the aim was to bolster up the public's opinion of their approach and underscore their work up until this point. Peter Lawson's job was to, you know, give in the flag of valor and expertise, whereas Becky was to come in and quash speculation, you know, clarify direction, the aim of the investigation going forward. The public may want to know the specifics as to why they waited so heavily on the river theory. However, it's important to consider and know that the police do not have to, nor should they, specify down to the very reason as to why they elected to go the river out. If, in fact, it causes issues of confidentiality, which, unfortunately, they eventually did. This, I believe, is where there was an extremely gross error, for two reasons. Number one, Nicola's status. Becky expressed Nicola was considered to be high risk with specific vulnerabilities. They didn't want to elaborate, but one can see this was her attempt to justify her SIO tactic up until this point. Now, why do I say that? You'll see and I'll show you. 
she's the one in charge of everybody underneath of her in this investigation. She is the senior investigating officer, okay? Remember, she's a detective superintendent. She's the one in charge of the direction, the decisions made, where the resources go and where they do not, okay? But one can see this was her attempt to justify her SIO tactics. However, if you really think about it, high risk with specific vulnerabilities in no way does anything to help aid the missing person case of Nicola Bully. Instead, it is a vanilla way of coming right out and revealing that she was trying to justify her approach up to this point. In fact, it is victim blaming. Simply following it up with stating, we don't want to get into it, but high risk is why. Now, does this really progress the search and investigation to help find Nicola like I had asked? Or does this justify the SIO's decision-making process up until this point? In my opinion, it can only reasonably be used to suggest the latter. That is, justifying why they have emphasized the river, specific vulnerabilities, which on its face will undoubtedly lead to more speculation, only things that can further perturb and hinder the investigation going forward. This approach to this presser by Becky is what made it clear to me that she didn't really think about what she was going to say from a PR standpoint, merely vote motivated by self-interest. She was hurt. She was annoyed by all the speculation. She was upset with the critique of the ship that she has led. To speak, merely to justify her approach, not going so far as considering the potential consequences, which backfired in a big, big way. Number two, why suggest the basis for justifying the river poach as being high risk status due to specific vulnerabilities when in fact everyone knows the SIO was not assigned to the case until Monday, three to four days later? Is this how the Lancashire Constabulary approaches high risk status cases? Oh, it's Friday. It's the weekend. We'll wait till Monday. The missing per, you know, that's not really important till Monday. High risk status, in my opinion, means immediate, on the spot, bing bang, like right then and there. Friday, within an hour, two hours, that time, right? How does this portray the SIO and the police approaching this with a sense of urgency, protocol for high risk status? I'll help you. It doesn't whatsoever. Peter and Becky were not on the same page. It was clear. She attempted to repair her image and reasoning for how she conducted things the way she has. The high-risk status by itself doesn't add up for it took three days for her to be assigned. For Becky, this wasn't about quashing speculation, which obviously she didn't think ahead about or even consider the eventual consequences. It was about justifying her approach and covering her own ass as the SIO. Meanwhile, using the high-risk status and specific vulnerabilities to, in a low IQ way of justifying why Nicola is missing, and hence this is why we chose to do what we did. They used the high-risk status and specific vulnerabilities to achieve this aim, which greatly failed, okay? Yes, she merely thought, we ask that you respect the privacy, would do the trick, Clearly motivated by self-interest here, I'll reiterate that again. Further, I'll show you this in action, just wait. But first, take a listen to Peter Lawson here. Take notice. They move from Superintendent Riley to the Assistant Chief Constable, two steps removed from the top of the Lancashire Constabulary. Recognize his decorated blazer. He looks the part. Then he verbalizes the part. In my opinion, it wasn't his fault the presser went awry. He was prepared and stated what he needed to. It used to be extensive media interest, uh, commentary, speculation, and, de and indeed some criticism of our police investigation. Therefore, to try and address some of that, uh, we will take you through in some detail, more than would normally be the case with an investigation, what exactly we've, we have done over the last 19 days and continue to do. I would like to thank the public for all of their assistance throughout this investigation. We've involved a range of specialists, uh, both locally, regionally and nationally. The investigation has not wanted at any stage for experts who are the best in their field available to law enforcement in the UK.
However, the, the officers involved in the investigation are the same experienced specialist and many senior officers who are concerned with the investigation of the most serious and complex crimes. That is the importance and focus we have given to the investigation to find Nicola. To give you some figures to back up some of what I've described, we have visited more than 300 premises, spoken to almost 300 people and received around about 1,500 pieces of information into the inquiry. In terms of the physical searches, both water-based and on land, we've used specialist resources from both police, a range of other agencies, and I'm grateful to those other agencies who've supported us. And in police assets, that's included the Northwest Underwater Search Unit, police drones, horses, dogs, and the police helicopter. We continue to search extensively the River Wire and surrounding area downstream and out into the sea towards the estuary. We've consulted with national experts in their field, including environmental and tidal experts. And we're carrying out an extensive, have carried out an extensive land search uh, surrounding the river, including some properties around the area where Nicola went missing. Uh, and something around Nicola's vulnerabilities that we're able to counter some of the and I will be clear, but ill-informed speculation and conjecture that has at times distracted the investigation from what ought to have been its priorities. It has been a distraction. So you hear him start, and Becky also states it as well. We're sharing here more today than we typically do in investigation. It's creating the ruse that they're going above and beyond to appease the public. You know, consulting experts, as Peter says, best in the nation, blah, blah, blah. You get the point. Now... Notice the shift, shall we say, in tone and demeanor underlying the words spoken in regards to Becky's approach. You can tell she has been annoyed, frustrated by all the speculation and criticism of the, of the investigation she has led up until this point. She knows she made a mistake in the initial stages, but for some reason, instead of acknowledging it, she decided to double down and campaign why her direction was the appropriate and correct one. From a macro level, this is so ugly. Why are we even here? What's the purpose? polishing the scuffs off the boots, or finding answers, furthering the investigation. But how can she allow her approach to this to become so personal, at least within the PR forum? Quite simply put, Becky allowed her personal angst, being fed up with all the scrutiny directed at her as of late, insofar as the investigation handling since day one is concerned, she let it take over. It hijacked her mind, her mode of conversation, in the moment. It fogged her ability to carry out her role, speaking on the matter, in an effective and advantageous way for Nicola. Listen here. Everything is done by what she thinks, perceives, believes. Where is the objectivity? Don't get me wrong. I understand and respect she is the SIO, the one in charge of the investigation and its direction. But since when are investigations carried out in such a clear, subjective, Becky's way manner? Honestly, I'm not coming down on her, but I can't ignore the reality here. In the initial stages, based on the information I received, I made it clear that it was my working hypothesis at that time, based with all the facts, that the main hypothesis I was working on at that time was that Nicola had gone in the river. This has been misconstrued in the press and said that that was what I said. I said that was my main working hypothesis at that time. And that remains my main working hypothesis. I think it's clear to see that the amount of effort, hours worked, resources that we have put into this investigation, that we have always been open-minded. But reiterating that we were remaining open-minded to all three of those scenarios. I've expressed before the hypotheses have been continually reviewed based on the information that is known to the inquiry team and the inquiry team only. Whilst other people may speculate and spread rumours, so whilst my main working line of inquiry at the moment is that Nicola, based on the information known to me from the incident and of Nicola herself and the information and vulnerabilities that have been given to us by her family. So in terms of persistent myths that keep being referred to in the press, um, the derelict house which is across the other side of the river that has been searched three times 
with the permission of the owner and Nicola is not in there. But I think it's also um, really uh, obvious that we are being inundated with false information, um, accusations and rumours, which is distracting us from um, our work. Um, has been reported that it was in the area on the morning of the 27th, like many other hundreds of cars that morning. We're really grateful for the witness who has told us about that and we are continuing to make inquiries to try and track down that specific van. From my perspective, being in possession of all the facts and information of this case, I do not believe that to be suspicious. From my perspective, being in possession of all the facts and information of this case, I do not believe that to be suspicious. There's also been mention of a number of fishermen that have been seen that morning who again were described as suspicious. I myself don't find it suspicious that fishermen would be in the area of a river that morning or carrying fishing rods. But there was some suggestion that one of these males might have been looking to cover his face. We have made numerous appeals for these fishermen to come forward. We have made contact with the local angling clubs and we have also um, ascertained the time of the witness passing down that road and check the CCTV at the Grapes pub, which covers that end of Garstang Road. And we can't see any of those fishermen at that time on that day. But we are continuing to try and trace these people. Again, I would urge they are not necessarily suspicious to me, that they are not necessarily suspicious to me. They are not necessarily suspicious to me. Okay, okay. Maybe I was a little harsh on her here. But the way she speaks, I made it clear. This has been misconstrued in the press. I said, I think that it's clear to see the amount of effort, hours worked, resources used, that we have remained open-minded. Maybe so, but isn't the effort and hours work come with a job? Why should I acknowledge this as going above and beyond? Further, it doesn't really get you anywhere, the effort and hours work that is, if it's orchestrated in a subjective manner, right? I have stressed that the three hypotheses have been continually reviewed, based on the information known by the Inquirer team and the Inquirer team only. Known by the Inquirer team only? Huh. Let the cat out of the bag on that one too, didn't ya? Based on the information known to me, I... The way she just continually doubles down and expresses, to me, my perspective, it, it drives me crazy. The derelict house, we searched it three times inundated by false information, distracting us. At this time, how do you know what is false or what may have a sliver of truth? Last time I checked, Nicola was still missing and your working hypothesis that you've apparently been glued to since day one has brought up nothing. The red van has been reported. And then she says, like many other hundreds of cars in the area that day. I mean, what a s smart ass comment. From my perspective, I do not believe that to be suspicious. The fisherman, I myself do not find this suspicious. And then she, if you go, go back and look at it, she nods her head in, again, a smart-ass manner, almost mocking that this idea is even catching traction. Now, but from my perspective, hasn't it now been reported by the old man with the white dog as well as the garage owner? I guess I don't think that's something to mock and slight, but that's my opinion. Further... Someone stated that it was out of season for fishing in the area, thus it would be considered poaching. I don't know if this is true, but if it is, why would they come forward? How on its face is this not suspicious? I'm, I'm just curious. Further, she states that per the CCTV footage by Grapes, that in regards to the fishermen, they couldn't be seen. Thus, this is what she uses to count it out. And my question again... Wouldn't two suspects electing to commit this act in broad daylight be a little bit more cautious than walking right in front of a CCT camera? Better yet, in front of a public business? I don't think that's enough to discount that, that theory. Last note. In regards to her emphasizing being open-minded, simply that they have in fact been running down all three hypotheses equally, that is, not being solely focused on the water, Although in the public's eye, this is clear given the active dive team since day one. Yet, it was only last weekend we saw authorities at the caravan park searching. And why did you have to search the derelict house three times? 
Did you miss something the first two? Just consider her words. They scream incompetence. Now, here's proof she has not been open-minded. What I can say, which we have established only yesterday, was that the if Nicola had left out of the river path and turned right, she has not reached the great pub. And we can say that because we have CCTV covering both sides of that pavement. Remained open-minded, routinely reviewing the three hypotheses. Nicola went missing on January 27th, everybody, a Friday morning. Apparently, she was high risk, yet the SIO was not assigned until after the weekend, God forbid, on Monday, three days later. Reports since day one have shown them searching the river wire, day after day, then moving the search out to the sea, to the bay, some 20 miles away, right? Day after day. Then no reports of searching anywhere else. Anywhere else. In fact, we don't get our first update that the caravan park is being searched on what? The, the 13th? Then you heard her say it. As of yesterday. Found out via CCTV that Nicola couldn't have exited via the river path. Remember, no CCTV <clears throat> was on the river path. but was at the local business of the grapes. So she reasoned that had Nicola left via the river path, because it was not covered, they would have been able to tell because she would eventually made her way to grapes, right? At least in that direction, she would have been seen. Now, again, how can you remain open-minded, but yet something that is 0.2 miles away from the bench and off of one of the very few exits when there is no CCTV, yet you didn't check into this area until the 14th, 18 days after she went missing, and then 17 days after she went missing, you checked the caravan park, which is a stone's throw from the bench. How does this support your words that you have remained open-minded all along the way? I'll tell you clearly, it doesn't. And in fact, reveals you are full of malarkey. Now, this is what drives me nuts. Instead of being humble, acknowledging that there was razor focus on one possibility from day one, and just recently, this past week actually it appears, not really considering alternatives. Sure, there may be work being done behind the scenes. It's not like we had no coverage of updates, however. Boy, oh boy, did we. River searches, updates from day one, day two, day three, day four. Then Peter Falding comes in. You get the point. How can she state these things, yet turn around and reiterate, we have been open-minded. We've remained open-minded. I'm astonished, to be honest with you. Yes, the watchdog, shadow secretary, and prime minister are alerted now due to the release of confidential and highly intimate and personal information. But... The scrutiny can't be far off from catching on to this egregious incompetence as well. My lord. Thank goodness for the Peter Falding, Bolesky's, and Mark Thomases of the world holding them accountable within the public's eye, or else this would just be another mystery for years and years to come. How and why can I possibly say this? Because without being pressured and forced to consider alternatives, they wouldn't. That's ego. That's pride. Now, huh. Let's move on from the presser. I mean, I'm certainly speaking to the police yesterday, and my conversations with him today was to really put some pressure on the SIO and say, you know, the vulnerability, the information that I've been given. You know, when I come in and do an investigation, I really go back to the very beginning, and it's amazing the amount of people that have provided me with information over the last 48 hours, telling me exactly what her state of mind is and what was going on. The police hadn't released that. I put them under pressure today and yesterday and said, listen, you've got to be much more open. What is going on? And this afternoon, I, I got some further information and pressed them on the fact that, you know, what has been the attendance of this ha at this house in relation to the emergency services? And, of course, we had this rush press release out this evening. It, I, they are changing their strategy. The senior officers within uh, Lancashire have acknowledged that there are some failings here. You know, it's not now isn't the right time to be reviewing that, but there will be in due course. What we now need to focus on is the reality of where Nicola could be. And like I've reiterated multiple times, 
It is the likes of Peter Falding, Berlareski, Mark Thomas. It is people like this in society as a whole whom hold the policing and all organizations at that accountable, ensure that the appropriate balance is maintained, the checks and balances, so to speak. If we were in a day and age before social media, the police in this case would have smoothed over the mistakes and lessons it would not have been learned. I appreciate these three. I'm sure there are more, but to me across the pond, these men have stood up against the tide for true ethics and appropriate public service. This is why I favor the Joe Rogans or the Elon Musk of the world. Y you get the point. Now, I understand Falding has a book coming out, but hey, he offered his services free of charge and he does have experience and is considered one of the best at that. We should appreciate his blunt open regard to the public, sincerely. Now, after that last clip you just watched, for me, after hearing Mark Thomas suggest this, that he came under information regarding the environment within the home, the SIOs attempting to change their approach, hence, we then had the press release regarding all of her vulnerabilities. But they didn't have to specify to an exact degree alcoholism, perimenopause, even going so far as asserting that this was in fact what caused the crisis, per the family statement. Now, it's kind of crazy. You probably heard me reference in my earlier videos. I, in fact, did receive information early on. I can't remember who it was at the time that I dismissed because it was not relevant. And I still don't think it is per se in regards to finding Nicola, that is. Sure, it may have an effect as to what happened, but it doesn't do anything but smear her character. This bothers me deeply, and I'll show you why. However, I want to briefly peruse the Lancashire Facebook post that day. I want to briefly touch on this. Even if you've heard them before, please follow me. I'll make it quick. Then I'll be moving right on along to my updated perspectives, theories, observations regarding what may have happened. Okay? There are some critical observations I want to underscore here because I believe it ties in with what I'm going to say later. So, the first Facebook post on that day of, okay? Today we held a live press conference to provide some updates in relation to our search for missing mom Nic Nicola Bully. We described how Nicola had some vulnerabilities at the time she went missing and we just wanted to expand on that a little. Now, why? Why are they doing this? Like, where is the PR coming in and red lighting this? Like, like who, who is approving this to go out, okay? It's really unusual of us to go into this level of detail. Now, with that said, why do they feel the need to do this? Because they screwed up. They're patching it up. I hope everybody can see that about someone's private life. But we felt it was important to clarify what we meant when we talked about vulnerabilities to avoid any further speculation and misinterpretation, which shows that it was a mistake. Sadly, it is clear from speaking to Paul and the family that Nicola had the past suffered with some significant issues with alcohol, which were brought on by her ongoing struggles with the menopause and that these struggles had resurfaced over recent months. This caused some real challenges for Paul and the family. As a result of these issues, a response car staffed by both police and health professionals attended a report of concern for welfare at Nicholas' home address on January 10th. Okay, this is the key aspect here. No one has been arrested in relation to this incident, but it is being investigated. Nicola has categorized as high risk. Just and tell so, us what happened when the police were called. Well, the details are, are, are limited, Kay, but what, what police have said, it was 10th of January, they received those calls, they went round with health professionals, they say, mm -hmm. medical professionals, um, not entirely sure what kind of triage team that is, but they go to the house, no one was arrested at the time on these, you know, concerns for welfare, but what they have said is that they are continuing to investigate what happened on that day, 17 days before Nicola went missing. Now, I don't think I'm reading or looking too far into this. It was the Lancashire police who used the phraseology, no one has been arrested, not me. Now, let's think about this for a second. Could they be referring to Nicola? No highly unlikely she's missing they would never insinuate potential arrest foreshadowing when she returns are they referring to a specific police member a health professional due to them not adequately handling the aftermath of the concern for welfare i guess very well could be but at this point to me in my opinion 
Arresting one of these would simply be a PR stunt to mend ties with the public for botching this misper regarding Nicola. It very likely could happen. Watch. But think about it. Are they going to go back and arrest a health professional or a police had Nicola went back not been missing? No. Now, if they do, it's because they're trying to mend their ties with the public. We'll watch and see what happens. Now, here's the kicker. Are they referring to another member within the household? Was it domestic related? I have received information that it very may well could be. Now, please, people. To the comment warriors out there, I am not suggesting this is in fact the case, but only raising the potential for it does not specify in the statement. There's a reason why they put it in there. Remember that. They're alerting somebody, whether it be a police member, healthcare professional, or Paul. Remember, if in fact there is foul play here, they could determine that had it been addressed as appropriate domestic situation at that time, maybe she never goes missing. Think Gabby Petito, a picture-perfect example of this very thing taking place. Interesting, right? No one has been arrested in relation to this incident. Hmm. It's either healthcare personnel, police member, or Paul. Who are they referring to? Oh, just wait, it gets better. Now on to the family statement. We, Nicola's family, have asked us to issue a statement for them. The family said that it has now been three weeks since Nikki went missing. We as family believe that the public focus has become distracted from finding Nikki and more about speculation and rumors into her and Paul's private life. Too late for that. As a family, we were aware beforehand that Lancashire Police last night released a statement with some personal details about our about our Nikki. And again, we were aware beforehand. It's this is the Lancashire Police again a very terrible attempt to cover their own ass. Like, do they not think people can read between the lines here? You think Paul's, I mean, uh, Nikki's family is going to say that? Come on. Although we know that Nikki would not have wanted this, exactly, she would not have wanted this. But anyways, there are people out there speculating and threatening to sell stories about her. This is appalling and needs to stop. So, although Nikki wouldn't want it out because we don't want people selling stories, we're okay with it. What's the motive here? The police know the truth about Nikki, and now the public needs to focus on finding her. On to the next one. Due to perimenopause, Nikki suffered with significant side effects such as brain fog, restless sleep, and was taking HRT to help. But this was giving her intense headaches, which caused Nikki to stop taking the HRT, thinking that may have helped her, but only ended up causing the crisis. What? I... The police department is posting this stuff. Now, I still honestly cannot believe it. Like, I'm speechless. Like, they post one, then, you know, someone could be arrested. We're investigating further. Two, Nikki doesn't want it to come out, but we don't want people to sell stories, so we're okay with it. We knew the police were going to do it beforehand. Getting specific, she suffered from brain fog, restless sleep, taking HRT, and then... But only ended up causing the crisis. Okay, so, so now they know definitively what exactly caused her to go missing in the crisis. Yep, she took the girls to school, was walking along at 9.01, sent the text message to a friend, set up the play date, started the team's meeting at 9.01, sorry. But we know whatever happened, it had to do with the HR. Like, how can the family say that? Seriously, how can they say that? The public focus has to be on finding her and not making up wild theories about her personal life. Then stop being inconsistent. That's my opinion, okay? Despite what some media outlets and individuals are suggesting, we are being updated daily and receive support from our family and li liaison officers. Then, this is, this is the weirdest thing yet, okay? The next post. Nikki is such a wonderful daughter, sister, partner, and mother. Is Miss Dearly. We all need you back in our lives. So speaking to her as if she's still out there, okay? Nikki, we hope you are reading this and know that we love you so much and your girls want a cuddle. We all need you home. You can reach out to us or you can contact missingpeople.org.uk. Don't be scared. We all love you very much. What? Don't be scared or you can contact missingpeople.org. People, 
if she chose to leave, it's something to do with her family, and that's why, okay? The fact that her family, or apparently her family, is giving her the option. Or you can contact the missing people's org. Okay, this makes me think she wasn't abducted, right? She wasn't abducted because they're not speaking to a kidnapper here. They're not speaking to a third party. It's almost psychologically as if they believe she's still out there and ran away because of something that happened in the house or she fell in the river and died. That That's what it's down to if you read between the lines, okay? Even, even suggesting or you can contact the missing people or... Just so you know, 45-year-old mom of two, if you weren't aware, you can call the missing persons. I, I can't even believe it. Don't be scared. This is huge, okay? Why would they be scared? This is supposed to be the family statement. Why are they insinuating that she could possibly potentially be scared? Of what? Paul? Sister? Sister involved in things that Nicola found out about? Was Emma involved? I don't know. I'm not... People, please. I don't want to see a comment. I can't believe you're saying that. I am exercising a thought experiment because Nicholas still missing, reading between the lines. You can reach out or you can contact missing people org. That's weird. Don't be scared. That's weird. Okay? Now, last comment I want to make on these specific vulnerabilities, specific to Nicola and the case. Maybe the reason the police and the SIO Becky were so locked in on, and apparently still are, the river hypothesis, is because if she didn't leave under her own accord, if, i.e. she's still alive somewhere, then something had to have happened at the riverbank, i.e. could have been natural causes, maybe a heart attack, stroke, then fell in, or she chose self-fate, what have you. Now, I personally do not believe at this point it is either one of those two. But if Nicola is still out there, I'm sure paying attention to the coverage of the case, how do you think she feels now? If she was depressed or not in the best mental space, per the family's apparent cause of the crisis, being her coming down from HRT then releasing the specifics to the world, is the absolute worst possible move to make. Why would she want to come forward now? In fact, if she is out there, I would imagine this recent week's developments just signed, sealed, and delivered her remaining off the grid forever. Now, yes, I know she cares for her daughters deeply, but if she did leave by her choice, it's due to her mental struggle she's dealing with. This is only going to exacerbate that. I couldn't even possibly imagine trying to walk back into that. Explaining. No one would understand. Releasing her vulnerabilities, then going into specifics as to her struggles with alcoholism. Even detailing that she has struggled even more so as of late. Blaming such on her menopause meds. I, I, I really can't believe it. Under the guise of a family statement? Really? Character smear. Then, we love you. Don't be scared. Reach out to us or call the missing persons org. It's just, something's not right. Something is not right here. And why do I say this is such a bad move? Imagine how Nikki's feeling right now if she is out there somewhere. And if she if she is, and if you are, Nikki, there's a lot of people that will support you. Um, you don't have to deal with whatever you were dealing with. I don't know if someone needs to create a you know a petition to to as a comfort thing. Um I would be more than happy to do that, or somebody will, but I feel at this point, if she's still out there, it's important that this all gets reversed, because if she's out there, this is the worst possible play to release this information. And the fact that the family's behind it, and then even further giving more details as to the cause of the crisis, it's almost as if she's not here anymore, and they know that, and they're not scared of releasing this information because they know she won't see it but yet 
they say, if you're out there, don't be scared to call us. It's like they're playing both sides of the fence. I can see right through it. If she is still out there, why it's so damaging and and what bothers me so deeply about it, it reminds me of a recent U.S. case as to why you don't approach it this way. Take a look. High school after his daughter takes her own life. Good evening. I'm Christine Johnson. Welcome back. I'm Maurice Dubois. The father of the 14-year-old says his daughter was bullied and had the district taken action sooner, she'd still be alive. CBS 2's Christine Sloan has the story. And we do want to warn you what you're, see, what you're about to see could be disturbing. She just loved life. She was the happiest kid. I mean... Everybody loved her. He's heartbroken. Michael Cush says his 14-year-old daughter, Adriana, died by suicide last week. Days after this disturbing video was posted on social media as she walked with her boyfriend in a hallway at Central Regional High School in the Bayville section of Berkeley Township. Yes, I realize Nicola being missing is completely different from that of an adolescent due to school bullying, but... I wanted to highlight the affect um, that public social media character smearing has and could potentially have. Adriana, the girl in the clip you had just witnessed, chose to take her own life, not due to the bullying directly per se, but due to the after effects, the psychological weight and humility posting said videos online caused her after the event was posted of the beating. Hence, simply put, if Nicola is still out there, given the recent week's developments, brandishing of her specific vulnerabilities, this is beyond dangerous. I don't even know where to begin. If she is out there and now decides to do something, take her home life now, that SIO and police department are going to be hung out to dry. There's no question there. Moving on. The reason I wanted to cover the presser in depth as I did, and then the Facebook post, as you can clearly see if you've stuck with me this far, will play into what I'm about to say. This episode's true mind juice. Side note, quickly. If you enjoy the content, please hit the thumbs up button for me, as it does help the video and the algorithm, heightens its potential to raise awareness towards the case and Nicola. As a US-based creator, I have noticed that there are not many here covering the case. From where I stand now, The heat needs to be turned up on the investigation and those involved directly to straighten things out if there's still time. Before I jump right into where I finished off last time, the upper field that is, I want to insert a few comments from Kenneth Maines, a US-based detective whom is one of my favorites. He spent time undercover with the FBI and specializes in cold cases. He has a no BS approach and in fact has uploaded two videos on this case. However, he has not dug too far into the details and from what I can tell doesn't plan to. But he has made one to two comments and thoughts that have really transcended my perspective on the case. Let's take a listen here and then I'll carry on from there. I will say that this daylight hours is an odd time to strike if that's a well-traveled area. If it is, it's somebody that knows that area uh, and probably has walked that area just like Delphi. It's not a stranger. Remember all these idiots that kept saying, oh, it's, it's a stranger, it's somebody from out of town, it's somebody, again, it goes back to people not knowing what they're talking about because they're not educated in that field. They're just making guesses, and they're not even educated guesses. That's why you leave it to the professionals, okay? Any blood, if she was rendered unconscious by a punch in the nose or something like that, want to know more about that dog? Did anyone hear that dog bark? Not at strangers, but if there's a struggle, a lot of times the dogs will bark. I believe that's what happened in Idaho. I believe that's what happened in O.J. Simpson case. The dogs aren't barking at the stranger. They're barking at the struggle that has taken place. Be curious of what the dog would do if she went into the water. And if she's being, you know, taken by the current down, I still, and, and is yelling, I think the dog would follow her.
The only way the dog would not follow her, I believe, is if she was put into a vehicle right then and there, right? I don't think the dog's going to chase the vehicle. It could, but then maybe it would do it for a little bit and then return to where she last were and where her scent is, you know, if her phone is there. I went last time with the upper field, if you remember, I suggested potentially um, Nicola being approached, apprehended, and taken um, through the gate up here or down and around, someone being parked back here. Now, where I sit at this very second, I don't believe that the gate is as plausible as I believed before because pulling a car in here would be highly dangerous. I mean, yes, these are holiday homes, but risking the CCTV, the ring door cameras, like I had said, plus for what it's worth, they did suggest that they didn't see anything leaving here. Okay. So I'm going to trust that. Plus it's just not, not very smart. Um, so it could be something across here, right? Now, the thing, two things that Kenneth Maine said that I think were extremely important. He suggested that dogs typically bark at the struggle and not necessarily the stranger. That's very intriguing to me because I, I agree with that, okay? Um, and further, he suggested that if Nicola had maybe went into the river, whether it be by self-fate or by, you know, suffering a medical issue that Willow would have likely followed her as she went down the stream. I, I mean, that, I, I agree. I mean, why wouldn't, why wouldn't? I mean, that, that makes so much sense. So we, Nick, um, Willow's witnessed here by the um, caravan lady um, between the bench and the fence, not the water. So for me, the river theory at this point is just done. It's exhausted. It's just given all the time they've spent searching. I do not think the river's an option. I really don't. Now, it could turn out being the case. They find her down there. But if that's the case, then she didn't enter around here. Because I think Willow would have shown us that in some capacity. Um, and the only things that we know, even though I think they're very telling, Willow barked here or struggle at the struggle. We'll take that and run with it. Willow barked at the struggle, okay? up here for the old man with the white dog's account, okay, up here, and then the next day when Paul and family brought her, brought her back, but yet Willow was found between the bench and the fence here, along with the phone on the bench and the harness here, so we have three points of intrigue that I think tell, the day of Willow barks at a struggle here with Nicola, okay, Willow's found between the bench and the fence, not the water, where the harness was staged, between the bench and the fence here about 20 minutes later. And then the next day, Willow appeared to alert over here and very clearly not here as Paul suggested. He expected Willow to alert, but she didn't. Okay, so day of Willow barks to strangers. The next day alerted here was found between the bench and the fence here. So somehow these three points have to somehow paint a picture, right? Okay, um... Like I said, the river theory I think is out because I, I do agree with him. I, I do think Willow would have followed the bank. I do. I really do. Um, and then the next thing that I, I want to discuss. Um, oh, you know, he Willow then would have followed her all the way down. Remember, I don't know how old Willow is, but Paul did suggest that they've been coming here for the 12 years at least. That's how long he recalls doing this routine with, with Nicola. So if Willow's less than 12 years old, Willow is very accustomed to walking down the towpath with a harness and lead on, okay, conditioned. Willow is then going to understand and know that upon the kissing gate, the harness comes off, and then she has free reign around here, okay? Willow is further going to likely know that she has to be harnessed up before leaving, okay? For you to suggest that he could go under the fence or he could jump over the stile, she could jump over the stile, you're not considering how obedient Willow is. This is a fixed pattern that Willow very clearly understands. Now, I have dogs. My dogs are extremely intelligent. And you say this word, that word, you tilt your head this way, that way. They understand. They know. You know what I'm talking about if you're a dog owner. 
So for people that say, oh, that she just would have jumped. No. Remember, Nicola hasn't went hasn't went missing 16 times and Willow is able to think back, oh yeah, on that one time. No, this is a very weird, obscure event for Willow. Most likely, the one out of 100 times, something different happened. Willow doesn't know how to act. She's confused, okay? So I would argue that Willow would not jump over the fence or go under it if alone if alone do i think that willow would follow nicola absolutely but if nicola was apprehended and put into a vehicle anywhere outside of the lower and upper field where willow is obedient to understand she's off harness willow by herself under her own accord is going not in my opinion on her own will leave without being harnessed okay because she's conditioned and trained and she has no reason to think otherwise she's still expecting Paul or Nicola to come back and harness her and then continue routine like that's all she knows okay enough about that now I suggested last time that there would be two people why because the old man with the white dog saw them and then further the local garage owner had had also cited seeing two people so for me those two people were huge but according to Becky apparently they're not suspicious okay I mean she even goes so far as to say that we haven't seen him on CCTV you're not going to if they committed the crime because they would have known where and where not to go. But I'm not going to go there. You know, um, but if Nicola, I do not think she left through the gate. But if the perps got her up here and why, you're not going to want to do it around here because obviously the caravan lady could see a dog running around. So you're not going to be over here. You're not going to be here because you can't see what's coming, right? There's a house here. And unless it's the person who lives here, it's just too dangerous. It's going to be over here. There's no CCTV. It's all footage, right? This is where the dog alerted to the struggle the day of and the next day. Something happened over here, right? So with the van theory in two people, I think there would be a male that would be able to control Nicola getting into the van once apprehended and then hightailing the heck out of there. The second person, in my opinion, is going to have to be a female. Why? To continue the ruse. In case anybody comes and sees them, it's going to have to be a female. Because if it's a male and anybody sees them, that's going to throw the whole plan out. Everybody's going to know Nicola arrived with Willow, but then there's a spotting of a male with Willow. It's got to be another female. And to go further on that note... I would suggest it's going to be one that looks like Nicola. You know, you could think her sister. I don't think so. She has dark hair. So let's suggest Emma, for instance, okay? If Nicola leaves in this route, either way, would Willow follow a stranger back? I doubt it, especially if there was a struggle and Willow perceived this struggle with that individual. Now mom's gone. Like Maine suggested, Willow may follow for a while, but is eventually going to come back to where the scent last was, right? Now, if it's a stranger, I don't think Willow's going to be the biggest fan of that stranger and then follow them, okay? So in my opinion, it's going to be someone that Willow is familiar with, and this is why I suggest Emma. For a thought experiment, people, don't freak out on me, okay? And she looks like Nicola is then responsible for leading Willow back the phone and the harness, okay? Why is Willow then found between the fence fence and the bench? Because whomever that familiar person was likely left the lower field area, told Willow to stay, stay. Willow doesn't know any different. Willow's thinking, okay, where's mom? She left up here, what the heck? Now, you know, Paul, Emma left this way. I don't know what to think. I don't know what to think. Her sense on the phone and the harness... So it's not like Willow's going to go all the way back up here. Willow's going to stay with the scent on the phone, okay, and where the familiarity last left, anticipating them to return. Hence, Willow's running between the fence and the, and the bench. This is where I think Emma, <clears throat> and I think Blonde, and trust me, I'm going to blow your head off with some further stuff that I have, left this way. Now, which direction? I have no idea, okay? Maybe down this way, you know, and across, which we'll get there. But I think that's why Willow's here, okay? Because there was a person of familiarity that Willow followed back down. If it was a stranger, Willow would have remained where the struggle was, maybe followed for a bit, but then came back to where the scent last was. And Willow's going to remain here, maybe run down and check out, check things here, you know. 
Could Willow potentially come back down, find the phone, smell it, and remain? Sure, yeah, but I don't think that that's plausible. That's a pretty big distance. My opinion, Willow's going to remain up here, even if there's a stranger, okay? My opinion, Willow came back because it was someone familiar and then remained between the fence and the bench because that person familiar either said to stay, Willow's going to remain, doesn't know any different, that person left, right? That's my theory. Updated on that. I hope that makes sense. A little bit different here. Going off of the old man with the white dog who recognized Nicola with Willow and heard him barking. That's why he noticed, which I believe is probably in this house here. It's not this Ron guy who was seen on Sky News the other day because he wasn't there until 920 or 930 and was said to see the phone. Okay, so it's not the same guy. The old man with the white dog is up here because like I showed you last time, they said that he left the field probably through the gate because he had a code like people have suggested. It's not a key. It's a code. People who are in these holiday homes get the code or fishermen get the code. Likely, um, well, shoot, why is that not showing up? There we go. All right, likely seeing and witnessing it over the fence bang okay the struggle here recognizing the two people here when he left the field probably this way okay um or the old man with the white dog could have been you know walking back as nicola was coming up and around um you know maybe nicola was down here and the old man was just coming here and leaving and then as Nicola was coming up here, she was approached by the people. And then the old man looked and then looked back and saw the two suspicious people. That's possible, too. It doesn't necessarily have to be over here. That's possible, too. Right? But I don't think these two people are going to approach an apprehender if they know that he's in the vicinity. And they would know that because he just came from there. In my opinion, that's why it's over here. Okay? So with that said... Um, she doesn't have to leave this way. What if Willow is back down here by the bench because that's where Nicola left? Again, I think Willow would follow Nicola without a harness if she was in distress, right? Um, so let's say the apprehender and walk her down, which I think would be stupid. They're not going to put themselves in that position because all it's going to take is somebody to come with a dog. Then they're screwed, right? They had to leave this way somewhere, right? So I do not think that Nicola could have made it back to the bench. I just I just don't. I think her phone was put there by somebody. It was staged by somebody. Willow was led back and remained between the fence and the bench because the person familiar then left, and I honestly think down, and wouldn't go back through the towpath. Yes, they would be innocent at the time, but they wouldn't want to be witnessed. They're probably going to leave the fence and then come down and go across, and I'll show you how they're here, or given the recent thing here now. Judith says, I wonder why Paul thinks it's to do with someone in the village. I think it's also based on what locals, it's like Billy, the, the village talk, right? I believe there's talk going around that a, a scream was heard after 9.33. This map was provided by a friend of uh, Nicola and Paul. And Here's the true crime is she apparently has a, good connection with um, friends of the family of Nicola and Paul. So she's the only one that really has good connection resources. Um, it's definitely not going to be me because I said his name on my mouth a couple times, not in the right light. So, which is fine. This is a thought experiment, right guys? Um, but she shows you, and then I'll pull it up on here, the depth of the river. You know, it's a little bit deeper here and it's steep. Um, and then it's red here, it's too deep. You see two red dotted lines that go back this way and then over here. Those are showing potential routes back to where the red van was allegedly spotted. So let's take a look at that, which is kind of crazy. Um, it's going to be right here. All right, so this is where allegedly the red van was seen parking, which is kind of creepy, actually. So if we move along down Hall Lane here, 
that's just a weird like field and then just is right here no nope, next one there so it's alleged that in that picture that I'll put up on the screen here too is suggesting that the red van was parked here the suspicious red teddy van was was parked here okay so then under that map basis that the friends provided which is right in this area so I'll pin like, that just showed you when we were in here that's where the van is so in that map that the friend provides they're suggesting that given their water depth you could come across anywhere over here and then make it back to the van. There's no CCTV footage over here. Or you would have to come. So here's the bench. Like I suggested, Willow's wanting up and down between the fence and the bench. We'll come across. And then you wouldn't want to go the towpath because someone could see you. You would cut down here and then come across. Probably stay in the tree line back to where the van is. That's what that map is showing. The potential that that would be possible. Right? So, <laughs> someone apprehending and leading Nicola this way, I guess someone could have, yeah. Someone, so let's say, given that following that two-person theory, not the gate, likely not this way, because if Nicola was, to, you're not going to park a van right here probably because people could see it. And Willow would probably follow, you know, until the vehicle was. Um, so apprehended, last seen here. But then as um, she makes her way this way, the guy that likely saw her, which I believe is over the fence at, or through the gate as he was leaving through the gate over the field, okay, as she makes her way this way, this is going to lose sight, right? as she makes her way this way. So she's approached by two people right here. One of them then leads her across here and then up to the van. See, that makes a lot of sense, right? Meanwhile, the other one would then take the phone, harness, and willow back to the bench. And also would be able to see anybody coming down the path if they would need to divert or what have you. Going across here, setting the phone and the harness, staging them, then telling Willow to wait, 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 or stay. Given that it's someone familiar, Willow's going to stay there due to condition. I've already discussed that. That person, and then instead of going down the towpath, is then going to go down to where it's shallow, coming across, up and back, through the tree line like we can see in the map. And then themselves coming up and meeting at the van. Could be. That would make sense because I suggested earlier the one would leave and get the heck out of there. While the other one would leave a different direction. But this way, they could approach her last scene over here, lead Nicola this way. Meanwhile, the other one's going back with Willow, the phone, and the harness. Telling Willow to stay, leaving to the kissing gate. Willow doesn't know any different, leaves running and pacing. This makes a lot of sense to me because that's where he was told to stay. The last known familiarity is where you're going to see Willow remaining there, leaving, coming down the second person, then going and joining up back in the van, and then all three leave, right? That makes a lot of freaking sense too, and especially because a friend suggested it, like, <laughs> which I think it's Emma. The friend leaving this way, and maybe it's not, leaving this way, like, I mean, that's that's a good thought. That, that makes a lot of sense, actually. Huh. Wow. So, yeah. Last scene here. The struggles here. Willow alerting up here. Nicola and the first perp go this way. Willow harness phone go back this way. Somehow coax Willow. Just stay. Wait, wait. Just stay. This person leaves. Not going back down the towpath because they could see somebody. Going where it's shallow, as you can see in the map, and then bending back around and meeting at the van. And then, if you look at the map here, then that van would not likely go this way because you're going back to town. And once you hit that, you hit CCTV. Yes, I know there's not much CCTV here, and that's why they're asking for it. So that would make sense. The area that they're asking for wouldn't have been covered here right 
so some, but I don't think you would come back in. My opinion, you're going to go rural. Look at this. And then, I remember that one guy's video where he saw that spot about a mile in between St. Michael's and Inskip? Well, look. Inskip is right here. Let me turn that off. Here's the van. I suggest they're going to leave this way, right? Follow the road. And then, who knows, wherever, okay? But here's Inskip. So if it were somebody close to home, they'd be able to do whatever here and then get back, right? Morning. Morning, sir. Come on Fine. through. Do come How through. are you? No, no, not at all. Good to see you. You live here. Well, uh, it has been like that. Uh, so you, you actually, you saw the phone, is that right? Yeah. 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 You saw the phone that Friday morning. Yes. Yeah. And that was around, was it after half nine? I, I gave a full statement to the police yeah. with the exact time because, excuse me, because my wife's t telephone call had uh, a, 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 the time on it, so. Yeah. Yeah. But I've given a full statement. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Was yeah. it just on the bench, or? Pardon? Was it just on the bench? The phone? Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. 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 How's, how's the last three weeks been? Each day something new comes out, yeah. doesn't it? Yeah. You know? Yeah, yeah. You know? Yeah. But, uh, and, and in, in, in terms of, you know, when you saw Phone, Lead and Willow, who, you, you knew who Nicola was. No, I didn't. Oh, you, you knew Willow, that was it, wasn't it? You knew, you I, knew, what the, I, you knew Willow. I knew I'd seen, I'd seen um, both, both, both the orders of Willow yeah. walking this dog in the past. But yeah. whilst I knew them by face, like I know your face, yeah. I didn't know the name. Yeah, yeah. But, but you, I remember you actually telling me when you saw the Phone, the, the Lead and Willow, you were like... OK, I'm going to keep an eye on it, because something doesn't feel right. I, I, I thought somebody had gone to the toilet in the... Uh, uh, you know, that, that would have been that was my, my first... Uh, I got to about this red brick building here, and I, uh, I thought, this, this is not right. Mm. And uh, then there was a conversation, but my wife was trying to ring me, I was trying to ring her. Penny had rung my wife. Yeah. Um, to say that she'd, she'd fasten the dog up that was, that was... And Penny was the lady who actually spotted Willow initially yes. and saw the phone but didn't know what was going on with the That's phone. That's right, yes, yes. Yeah. And, and then after that, you know, what, what happened? Well, what the it, next it, that it was just a, a, a progression of, yeah. uh, of, of things happening, you know. We found out because of the wallpaper on the phone. We found out who the couple were, then the school was contacted and Paul arrived. Yeah. Well, look, we'll, we'll let you carry on with your walk. I know you do this every morning. Yes. Nicola did this almost every morning as yeah, well. Probably, yeah. yeah, We're retracing those steps, this time three weeks ago. Yeah. So, an important I know, I know. juncture. Thank <laughs> you very much. Take care. Take care. Briefly, a few remarks on Ron. You could tell he was not comfortable giving the interview upon being asked if it was... Half past nine when he saw the phone, he responded, I gave a statement to police. Police, I was on the phone with my wife. Further, he does give the female reporter a nice odd look up and down when she first asks him a question. For what it's worth, I don't think it's a big deal. Um, he's seen both of the owners before with Willow, but knows him by face, not by name. I thought someone went to the toilet. Uh, got to this red brick building right about there, the small maintenance shack building. I thought something was not right. Well, yeah, because Willow was running back up and down the fence. I honestly don't think there is really anything suspicious here, aside from learning that he was one of the witnesses that did come forward and give a statement to police. Now, where am I now? This is going to be shocking to a lot of people, and if you stuck with me this far, prepare yourselves. This is mind-blowing, and I can't believe I'm even going to go this far, but I'm going to. I do not believe she fell in the river had a medical related issue chose self-fate i believe willow would have showed us some behavior near or along the river's edge remember i am hooked on those three key points of interest the upper field the day of the next day and then where willow was found between the bench and the fence i believe those say something none of these three are next to the river she hasn't been found in this river up until the point i think that option's out unless she's found later i just don't think that that's plausible I do not believe she was abducted or taken by strangers. You know, it's daylight, well-traveled route. If she was abducted by two people 
It had to be someone familiar with her routine, confident enough they could swift her away, someone known to her, two people involved, if this is the truth. Now, as I showed you, the red van theory seems semi-plausible, as I showed you could have one leaving the upper field and down across the river, meanwhile the other one leads Willow, the dog harness, and the phone back, and then cutting around across the river up by the derelict house and meeting back at the van. Could be. Could be possible. I don't think so. I don't think that's it. I think... Oh, man, I can't believe I'm sticking my neck out there like this. I think I figured it out. But, man, I don't even want to go this far. All right. Um, I'm going to anyways. But before, I want to show you these clips, all right? Or before I get into what I believe had happened, let me... Let me set these next clips up for you to set the stage for what I'm about to say, okay? It's like Billy, the, the village talk, right? I believe there's talk going around that a, a scream was heard after 9.33. Map. So this map was provided by a friend of uh, Nicola and Paul that... The police have never, by the way, they've never released CCTV footage of Nicola, not even the one from her house. It was her friend that did it. Emma White released those still images. I'm not sure why they don't just release the video, but I think it's because maybe the kids on it, and of course they want to protect the kids. A few hours ago, as I'm sitting here fin finishing this up with what was 3 a.m. in the U.S., I received a comment. And someone stated, where did you hear about the old man with the white dog, Willa Barking? So I thought to myself, well, I got it from a close friend of Nicola's, whom is in tight with Gisela on Grizzly True Crime, right? If you've watched my previous videos, you can recall this as I have showed it multiple times. In fact, earlier on in this very episode, I have referenced why I use Gisela in, Gisela in Grizzly True Crime. Because she seemingly is the only one who appears to have an inside connection to this close said friend, which I've suggested in the past, I believe is Emma. She's the only one that's that tight with Paul. Right? Now, this same friend has recently sent her a hypothetical map wherein one could go two different ways across the river to where the red van was parked and spotted. Then you hear a friend or village gossip suggest now there's a scream sometime after 9.33 a.m. Then I showed, and you hear, it was Emma White who apparently released the initial CCTV photos of Nicola that morning, getting Willow in the boot, ready to leave that morning. It dawned on me. Is there a white man with a white dog? Holy smokes. Now remember, I want to reiterate this loud and clear. If Nicola was still out there, that is, left under her own accord, why would they release her vulnerabilities? It is bad enough to state perimenopause and ongoing struggles with alcoholism by itself. Now, per the family statement released by Lancashire Police Department's Facebook, they go one step further. And state, we know Nikki wouldn't want this, but people are threatening to sell stories regarding her and Paul's relationship. Paul's relationship. Bingo. Even going on to suggest the side effects of it. Brain fog, restlessness, the alcoholism kicked up when she got off her HRT met. Really? Like, how much more intimate and personal can you get? Further... They go on to suggest with certainty it is what caused the crisis. But yet, don't be scared. We love you. You can contact us here or the missingpersons.org.uk. Don't be scared. You can use the missingpersons.org.uk. That's weird, okay? 
I believe this family statement was written by Paul. Maybe Luis, I'm not sure. Emma? We know Nikki wouldn't want this, but people are threatening to sell stories about her and Paul's relationship. It's the Paul disclosure that is revealing here. Everyone wants to be quick to defend him. How dare I suggest it's him? Are you willing to apologize to him if you're... Of course I am. You apparently don't know me if you're stating that. My comment to that is, how about he acts better? Something's off with that guy. I don't know if he's on meds to deal with the grief. You know, to numb him. I don't know if, like the guy on the behavioral panel said, he's on semi the uh, Asperger autism spectrum. Something's off. Okay, that's my opinion and I'm entitled to have that, just like you are to disagree with me. That's okay. Alright? But I can't just be blind because of his role, alright? Something's off with the guy. Or you have other people say, we're all around here, we're all like that around here in England. Whatever, get out of here. You know, um... I won't have to apologize because he has something to do with it. Risky for me to assert, you betcha, and I understand that. But just watch and listen. Tell me I'm wrong when I'm done. If she was out there, they would never release her vulnerabilities, for such would by itself further heighten her status as riskier. Brandishing her struggles to the world, she apparently was already struggling in her own small bubble in St. Michael's on the Wire. How do you think she'd feel having it brandished and spewed to the entire globe? The family statement was to simmer speculation, shift attention away from Paul. He orchestrated that. Can't you see it? So these Facebook comments, presser releasing vulnerabilities, family statement doubling down and then expanding upon, also considering the January 10th issue. Still being investigated, but no one has been arrested yet? Is this another Gabby Petito situation? Now that could go two different ways. Is it because there's a domestic issue and they didn't have an arrest, so therefore if they did, like Paul in this case, they could have prevented what eventually happened to Nikki? Or was it a failure of psychiatric evaluation to where they needed to commit her, they didn't, she chose to unalive herself, and they kind of just dismissed it and she ended up doing it anyways? Either way, there could be an arrest, okay? I I'm acknowledging that. Either Nicola went to the river that day, was approached at the upper field and led away by Paul, staged by Emma, phone harness Willow, led back to the bench, heck, the red van. I don't believe that. I don't think Nicola was ever at the river wire that day. I remember I heard that Nicola from one source was laughing and joking at one point, talking to another friend at the school. Then you hear she didn't talk to anyone. Then there's a report that Paul won't let the girls be talked to by professionals. Further, although it may be speculation, but apparently the girls didn't like the way their hair was done that day because it wasn't how mommy did it. Remember, we saw the dad, mom, and the sister, Louise, speak in that original interview just days after she went missing. Why haven't they said anything publicly since the initial pressure, presser? Why has it been Paul and Emma side by side the whole damn way? Like I mentioned before, I would at least think her sister, Louise, would be right there too, right? I mean, they were so close and so tight that Louise was waiting for... Nicola to confirm their spa vacation that they had all planned. This is the problem. All of the rumors, things sent to Grizzly True Crime, are coming from Emma. Creating ruses, rumors, spinning misdirection, the red van, the scream, the old man with the white dog, etc. She apparently also released a CCTV from Nicola Paul's house in Inskip. Take a look at these. Then you go on the internet and they say released by the police. Wait, wait, wait. I thought Emma released him. What's the truth? Now, in regards to the pictures, look at Emma and Nicola. And I ask you, what is the one feature, although they look very much alike, that distinguishes them from one another, huh? Really take a look. 
To me, it's the nose. Nicola has more of a bulbous nose, whereas Emma's is more thinned out and straight and narrow. Now, look at the CCTV photos again. Zoom in. What's missing? What's been photoshopped and erased? What's not visible? Now, I know someone's going to be like, it's CCTV, you can't tell. Look at the picture. Especially the side profile of what's supposed to be Nicola outside the vehicle's passenger or driver's side. I guess it's the UK. Why does it look like the nose has been swiped off? Why? The one image of Nicola coming out of the house is quite blurry. The one where you get the side profile. And it appears there has been some blurring effect done to the nose area as well. And further, not being able to really distinguish the face. Now, I've seen ring door cameras. I mean, this is one of the personal house that's, what, eight feet away? They're not that blurry. They can be made that way, absolutely. Absolutely. The CCTV, in my opinion, is Emma. At Nicola and Paul's house that morning, in my opinion, at this time. There was a domestic issue. Either there was a domestic issue that took place prior to that morning of. Yes, there have been accounts that Nicola has was seen laughing and joking around. But my question is, were they intimate people who actually knew her? Or people who would not be able to really tell the difference between her and someone who looked like her from afar? Remember, if this is the case, like let's say Emma, she would be certain to not get too close to interact with anyone, right? What leads me here? The revelations regarding the January 10th incident. No one being arrested? Like I said, is this another Gabby Petito case? Did a friend of hers then help to cover it up? Remember, the grandparents had the two girls on Thursday night, the night prior to. And her dad, Nicola's dad, did emphasize that Nicola needed more time. In which... The grandfather said that was fine. They would keep him a little bit longer, understanding that she had a new client and it was going well. Could this actually have been because something happened wherein Paul, they, needed more time to cover up? Girls get home. Mummy's asleep. The next morning, maybe Mummy isn't feeling well. She's going to take you. Emma, that is. What actual proof do we have of Nicola that morning? Actually, think about it. CCTV? What if that's not her? Someone else could text someone, log into a team's call. It, in fact, it wouldn't be a bad idea to intentionally be spotted on CCTV, at least from afar. It would appear and sell to be her, of course. Now, why? I think there's one of two things going on here. Either there was a domestic issue between her and Paul that evening, while the kids were with the grandparents, or... She elected to harm herself, electing self-fate, wherein Paul then walked upon it. If Paul did do something, took her himself, I believe that he would be the only one to know this. For he would then contact Emma, suggesting to her it was self-fate, asking her to help to cover it up. Why? You cannot get a life insurance claim on someone who commits suicide. Monetary angle. Number two... You wouldn't want her kids to know, and it's best to believe that she vanished into thin air. Yes, either way is hard, but you really don't have a choice at this point. That morning, Friday, Emma presented to be Nicola in the CCTV. They manipulated the images, blurring, distorting. It's not hard to do. Emma likely dropped them off, took Willow to the river wire, staged the text and phone, then left Willow there alone via the gate. Paul then likely picked her up, wherein they then left her vehicle at the school so it fit the scheme. Willow was by the fence bench because she was left there by Emma. There is no man with a white dog. There are no two suspicious fishermen. There is no red teddy van. There was no scream. Everything that has been suggested by a close friend 
is all hocus pocus. Think about it. The only reason they reveal as much of the vulnerabilities as they did was not out of fear for her seeing it because they know she won't. It is to stop speculation, perturb the selling of Paul's relationship with her. The aspect regarding him. Like I said, Paul may have done it or walked in on her unaliving herself. But then I believe Emma was brought in to assist, which if you think about it, a lot more likely if Nikki did inflict her own fate for the girls and Paul. Protect the life insurance payout. Protect the sisters and parents from the truth. Yes, disappeared hurts, but not as painful as self-choice. Always asking oneself, what could I have done? Feeling that guilt. If this is true, then I guess the SIO Becky might have some reasoning for being the way she was. You know, so dismissive of everything. Was, was she in fact right? If so, I apologize for critiquing her so harshly, honestly. Either Paul did it, then sold the sold the story to Emma that it was unaliving, or Nikki did do it herself. Emma likewise came in to assist. Look at how tight these two are every step of the way. It's because they're protecting her fate from those that she loves. To me. If the vulnerabilities are true, this is very likely. If it's a domestic issue and Paul did it, he ain't going to tell Emma that. If Paul were to do it, he's going to sell the self-fate to Emma. She's going to believe it. And then that's the narrative spent to everybody else. Protecting the insurance payout. If she remains missing, eventually claiming death, then payout will be granted. Then the investigation never had a chance from day one. Now, you see pictures of Paul changing his name to Sam Beckett from the Quantum Leap. And if you remember back to the second interview, which by the way took place in Emma's holiday home, you know, she seems to be really comforting him awful lot, doesn't she? Maybe it's not an affair. Maybe it's because she sincerely feels for the guy. You know? But Scott Balko, this character from the Quantum Leap, apparently he will never reunite with his beloved life ever again. It's very odd that he assimilates himself with this guy so soon. Look at the recent developments. All the vulnerabilities that came out. She's not out there. She didn't fall in the river. She wasn't taken by strangers. Paul and Emma know what happened. They covered it, created this ruse to protect the family. Now, why are they raising a GoFundMe? That's a good question. And like I said, I may be all wrong, but hey. It's really weird to me that this close friend, Emma, is providing all these theories and hypotheticals. And then she's the only one standing next to Paul on the river's bank with the police. And then she's the one giving an interview right after Paul. I mean, the only time we've seen Luis and the parents is together, sitting together, doing it as a family. Everything else has ran through Emma and Paul. He may, he may be innocent, but hey, here's the deal. They're both guilty of covering it. All right? And I know this might be a stretch out there, but hey. This is a conclusion I've come to, unfortunately. Um, I hope everyone enjoys. Um, that's it for me, though. I'm going to get some sleep. Until next time, everybody. Mind you's out. All right, a couple key things that I wanted to mention that I completely forgot to. I just went and tested my ring door camera myself. It's very easy to go in there and manipulate the time zone, time stamp, and date very easily. Once you do that and then you send and provide it, there's no way to go into the metadata of the picture. Um, and even if there is, there's ways that you can 
resave and retrace the metadata of the photo to where it would be undistinguishable to be able to tell from an IT perspective. And I know he has an IT experience. Those in IT know exactly what I'm talking about. Um, further, I believe one of the CCTV pictures is actually Nicola taking from a separate date. Okay, and I will show that. The one standing outside the, for me it's passenger side in the US, but the driver's side in the UK I believe. Um, and I'll show that here where the um, nose is swiped and removed. Now, why would you do that? Because if one of them, oh yeah, that's definitively her, you're not even going to think about it. You're going to look and say, yep, that's her. And then your cognition is automatically going to go sweeping and presume they're all her, okay? I believe that they did insert one of them from a different date. The date was changed. He has IT experience. The picture of Nicola is the one that you see here, okay? They removed the nose because they don't want you to compare this picture with a lady coming out of the doorway, what you get the side profile of. And with that note, I want to comment on that too. If you look at a picture where she's got her hand on the boot and she's getting ready to lower it down, look how crisp and clear that picture is. I'll be damned. It's crisp as can be, right? But then... When you get the side profile picture of her coming out the doorway, it's blurry as all get out. Okay, that's a filter. It's going into the picture aspects of it itself and manipulating the image of it. Now, without really digging into it and connecting the dots like I just have, you're never going to catch on to it, really. One of the pictures is Nicola from a different date. IT experience, he went and manipulated the data of it to make it look like it was that morning, that day. It's roughly around the same time, in the morning time. She's wearing the same stuff. The other picture of her coming out the doorway is Emma. They went in and filtered and blurred out the face and totally rubbed the nose off so that you couldn't compare it or do what I just tried to attempt to do, okay? Last thing that I want to mention, apparently Emma's father or grandfather worked for the BBC for two decades. With that said, I've learned a lot about the UK in the last two weeks. Holy smokes. Good and bad. I would love to visit there, honestly. And I actually will here within the next year, I'm, I'm suspecting. Anyways, besides the point, um, he worked for the BBC for two decades if you've noticed in the news recently, there's a lot of corruption, unfortunately, in the policing organizations throughout the UK, okay? I'm not alleging that her grandfather is corrupt, but if she is involved to help him cover up, let's say, a potential unaliving, he would be able to pull the media strings. He probably has a wealth of money, connections to attorneys, and if you remember, if you remember, there's been rumblings that the original police investigation was being directed due to a specific campaign or politician, right? Doesn't that make sense? She's protected. He's protected. And I hate to say it, but even though, let's say if I reveal this stuff and it's correct, nothing's going to happen. They got such armed guards all the way up around them. You gotta find her, you know? But, alright, that's my last comment. Until next time, everybody. Mind juice out.